The 2022 Winter World Cup in Qatar was always bound to be clouded in controversy in one way or another, with lots of off-field talk dominating headlines in the build-up to the tournament. Thankfully, the football on the field has been incredible, with the usual suspects lighting things up, as well as a number of eye-watering shocks keeping those headline writers busy. It's not all been pretty on the field, however, with passions hot and the stakes high, tempered boiled over resulting in some titanic confrontations, causing us to look away from the actual football for a few seconds at least. We all love the drama though, don't we? In this video, we'll look over those times where the pressure has got to the heads of the world's football stars and the fans and things have just threatened to get a little out of control. Lionel Messi vs Mexico As many of us hoped and expected, Lionel Messi has sparked at what is expected to be his last ever World Cup. We've been given a reminder, if we needed one, as to why he's widely considered to be the best to ever play the game and is worshipped so passionately by the Argentina fans. After losing their opener against Saudi Arabia in shocking circumstances, Argentina needed a big performance from Messi in their must-win and potentially awkward second group game against Mexico. Did he deliver? Of course he did, with a goal and an assist for the great man, ensuring Lionel Scaloni's well-supported side got off the mark in their second match. However, Messi was involved in a spot of controversy that went a little under the radar in the grand scheme of things in his clash with Mexico. Following the game, Messi appeared to nudge away a Mexico shirt on the floor of his dressing room, or at least that is what Mexican boxing legend Canelo Alvarez thought when he took to Twitter in a rage following the game. Did you see Messi cleaning the floor with our jersey and flag? The boxing star fumed. He better pray to God that I don't find him. Just like I respect Argentina, he has to respect Mexico. I'm not talking about the country as a whole, just about the balls bleep that Messi did. Canelo isn't the kind of guy you want hunting you down. Thankfully for the football goat, Canelo Alvarez has since seen sense and apologized for his heat of the moment reaction, stating he may have got it slightly wrong. In these last few days, I got carried away by the passion and love I have for my country, and I made some comments that were out of order, Canelo said on Twitter on Wednesday. I want to apologize to Messi and to all the people of Argentina. Every day we learn something new and this time it was my turn. Messi can breathe one lengthy sigh of relief. The Belgium squad This winter's World Cup was set to be the final chance for the Belgian golden generation to show exactly how good they are. Plenty of top quality football has been played out in Qatar, despite having the best midfielder in the world right now in Kevin De Bruyne. None of it was played by an aging Belgian side, and they were sent packing before the tournament had even really begun going out in the group stage after a dire nil-nil draw with Croatia, having only scored once, and even that was against the lackluster Canadian side. Don't mention that they're aging though, they don't like that. That's the exact mistake De Bruyne made, publicly referring to the fact that their side is too old to compete with the big guns, particularly their elderly defence. The comments were unhelpful and publicly uncovered a rift in the Belgian squad. Former Tottenham defender Jan Vertonghen publicly replied to the Manchester City star, suggesting that the misfiring attack must also be too old to compete as they toiled against Morocco and Croatia. Rumours were leaked that there was a major bust-up between senior stars Thierbo Courtois, Jan Vertonghen and Real Madrid man Eden Hazard, with Romelu Lukaku reportedly being forced to intervene to prevent things from getting nasty. Hazard later denied the rumours, stating he'd merely told Vertonghen he wasn't fast anymore, to which he agreed. Still, it doesn't exactly sound harmonious. Courtois then said that whoever leaked this information to the press, it will be the last day in the national team, while he's now also reportedly refusing to talk to De Bruyne. Still with us? It all ended with Lukaku missing four clear-cut chances in the draw with Croatia, causing him to smash up one of the dugouts completing Belgium's extremely public and dramatic misery. Their golden generation is officially finished. Andre Anana sent home It wouldn't be a World Cup without a player being sent home after a bust-up with the manager. 20 years ago, Ireland and Manchester United star Roy Keane was sent home after a public argument with manager Mick McCarthy, and this time it was the controversial Cameroon goalkeeper Andre Anana who did the same. 
Having recently returned from a nine-month doping ban, Anana would have been pleased to even be included in Rigobert Song's squad for the tournament. His joy didn't last long though as Song was unhappy with Anana's performance in their opening day defeat against Switzerland, criticizing him for risking fatal mistakes by having the ball at his feet too much. The Cameroon coach opted to start with Devis Apassi for their thrilling thrill draw with Serbia, a decision Onana was so unhappy with that he requested to not even be a part of the squad in protest against the decision. The Cameroon FA then chose to suspend Onana for his actions, resulting in him catching the next plane home out of Qatar. That's one way to secure an extended winter break, I suppose. Granite Xhaka vs Serbia any Premier League fans will know that Granit Xhaka has never been one to shy away from confrontation, whether that be with opposition players or even his own fans. However, he's kept it under wraps in recent months, owed largely to his own personal success on the field as well as Arsenal's impressive start to this season. However, his liking for confrontation is clearly still there, and he released it once more at the World Cup when playing for Switzerland, predictably against his rival nation Serbia. Xhaka has a long-running argument with Serbia for political reasons that could probably fill a whole separate video. It appears that he just loves to wind them up, which, in fairness, seems easy for a team containing Aleksandr Mitrovic, as well as numerous other hotheads. Replays suggest that Xhaka goads the Serbia bench by shouting expletives over to them while grabbing his crotch, an action that he later denies doing. He then makes a beeline towards Mitrovic, persistently goading the feisty Fulham striker in the search of a reaction, one that he would almost certainly have got if the game had lasted for another 10 or 20 minutes. Xhaka and goalscorer Zerdan Shakiri have previously upset Serbs by making the Albanian eagle gesture in celebration, as a nod to Kosovo and Xhaka was predictably on the wind-up once more against Serbia in 2022. The Arsenal man had the last laugh as the Swiss advanced at the expense of Serbia, who had previously been seen as the dark horses of this tournament by many. Uruguay Lash Out I think it's fair to say that Uruguay are a passionate nation that produces equally passionate footballers. It's also fair to say that they don't like losing. Football has a funny way of righting wrongs and you just knew something was going to happen when Uruguay faced Ghana in their final group game. After Luis Suarez broke the hearts of the African nation with his antics in 2010, now was the time to gain revenge. They didn't do that in many ways, losing 2-0 to Uruguay this time round, but the result in the other game, between South Korea and Portugal, meant that even though Ghana went home, they took Uruguay with them and got to witness the impending meltdown. And meltdown they certainly did. Uruguay's players completely lost it at the end of the game chasing the referee down the tunnel due to their anger at how he had officiated the game, mainly his failure to give a penalty on Darwin Nunes after being instructed to consult VAR. To top it all off, Edison Cavani lived the dream of many football fans around the world when taking his frustration out on VAR itself, destroying one of the screens by pushing the tower over before storming off down the tunnel. If you're going to go out of the tournament early, you might as well do it in style, I guess. What are some other altercations that we've missed in the video? Let us know down in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and watch our other videos on the World Cup. See you next time!